Christ Jesus has triumphed over Satan and death. And now praise his name, I am free. Although he has gone. Greetings, friends. This is Pastor R. Norheim bringing you the Lutheran Gospel Hour of Pasadena, California. The optimist insists that we are living in the best time this world has ever seen. Never have we had it so good, and so on and so forth. The pessimist says just the opposite. We are living in the worst time this world has ever seen. Things are so bad that they can't become worse, and so forth and so on. There's another classification, however, the realist who recognizes the good and the bad, but he knows the answer which every age needs. Listen as we sing about it. In times like these, Our dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks that in a time when nobody seems to know which age has been the best or the worst, we have found Thee and Thy kingdom to be yesterday, today, and forever the same, the peak, the highest, the very best for all people of all ages. And thank Thee that forever, O Lord, Thy word is settled in heaven. All other books will fall and fail, but Thy book shall never fail. It is that eternal word of God that imparts eternal life to all who trust in the precious blood shed on Calvary's cross. And now as we anticipate the gathering up there on what we like to call Zion's Hill, we pray that we shall come marching from east and west to north and south to give the eternal praise, for thou art worthy of it, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Open wide, and 
and when I pass this veil of sorrow, I'll dwell upon the other side. Someday beyond the reach of mortal ken, someday God only knows just when. But this I know. 
Paul says in 1 Corinthians, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know it, part, but then I shall know even as I am known. We have many things that daily remind us of imperfect vision and limited knowledge. Solomon said, where there is no vision, the people perish. This is true of things in darkness, and it's also true of unsaved people in Christian communities. They have no vision spiritually, but there's all difference of degrees of vision among Christians. Some see clearly sin and grace, the world's need and the rich supply of the gospel. Some spend freely time, talents, and means in missionary endeavor, while others fail to do this. No wonder even in Paul's day, early Christians had to be exhorted to set their affection on this above and not on things on the earth. Selfishness is a common weakness. The Lutheran Gospel Hour could not continue its outreaching ministry without the help of listeners like many of you who have a God-given vision. You are co-laborers with God, and you are in your fellowship with us in bringing the light of the gospel into dark hearts at home and overseas. We thank you for each and every contribution and for your prayers also. The need is great and growing greater, but the laborers are few. Thank you for filling your place. The address member is the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 2, Pasadena, California, in Canada Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. from the kingdom of God. Mark 12, 34. Thus spake Jesus to a young student of all who had come to him for whatever light he could or would give on the law and especially on the commandments. He had asked Jesus which commandment in his estimation was the greatest. And Jesus had answered far better than the lawyer expected. Instead of singling out one commandment, he took the first table of the law which uh, God and Moses on Mount Sinai which consisted of three commandments. And he said concerning it, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The young was, of course, uh, amazed at so uh, 
You need so original an answer to his que question, but he must have been a little more amazed and awed as he heard Jesus continue. And the second is like, namely this, love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. In these two answers, Jesus gave the summary of both tables of the law, and saying that the first was the greatest and the second was like, made it clear that every commandment was the greatest because all were given by God. One could not be broken without breaking them all. Well, the young lawyer was deeply and his answer reveals that he agreed with Christ. He replied, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is God, and there is none other but he, and to love him with all heart and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifice. Say, that was quite a statement coming from a young scribe who had been influenced by the enemies of Jesus and was likely sent by them to get information against Christ. And we are happy to read in verse uh, 4 of Mark 12 that when Jesus saw that he discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Yes, I say we are happy to read this analysis as given by Jesus, one that was near the kingdom of God. It gives us a as to what is necessary in order that you and I know that we are, first of all, near the kingdom of God. Secondly, how we may know that we have entered the kingdom of God. First of all, we must know that it's one thing to be near and another thing to be in the kingdom of God. This young lawyer agreed with Jesus. In other words, he accepted the authority of the word of God. And surely this is important, for God's word is the faithful guide to peace with God. Only the word of God is 100% true. All else is faith and comes short in revealing man's sin and God's grace. But notice, too, that a man may agree with the word of God and yet remain outside the kingdom of God. Now, this is the place of the great divide in religious thinking and practice. It has been for centuries and will be as long as sinners need to be saved. Right here is where thousands make the great mistake of a set. Christian education and rejection are the one and same thing. But friends, they the young lawyer agreed with Jesus, but he said he was near the kingdom of God, not in as yet. His intellect was being enlightened on essential points and his conscience was likely being awakened, but he was still outside the kingdom of God. And you, my listener, may know much about sin, and you may know much about Jesus, but still you may be outside the kingdom of God. Christian life is not merely information, nor reformation. No, it's a heart change and called regeneration. He said to Nicodemus, he must be born again. Now let's look at the heart condition of one that is in the kingdom of God. Has his heart become better? It would be logical to the carnal mind to thus reason that one who is near the kingdom must have a better heart than he once had when he was afar off. But this is the testimony of the word of God, and it's not the testimony of people. Paul, for example, hated the Christians and severely persecuted them, but one day he was converted. And then for the first time he realized his heart was 